far, these slaves aren't treated right. I must say, you just don't use discipline. <laughs> My little magnolia blossom, I'm getting too old and sentimental. I only make them work 10 hours a day now. <laughs> oh, you're spoiling me. You've got to be cruel to be kind. I've been a hard master all my life, daughter. I feel I've earned myself a rest. I've had enough responsibility, more than enough. But who'd look after things? Even though I'm a woman, I do everything. I'll set the slaves a good example, Father. It takes a woman's touch. Watch. Straighten your back, you. And don't whimper. See, Pa? I can make myself respected, you have to admit it. Oh, yes, I do. You're something to look out for. And I declare you got real ladylike ideas. Let's go home. Emmanuel, you know what I'll do? I'll take you to the cattle market tomorrow. How exciting. It'll be exciting for that young Lawrence Milan. He'll be there with his pa, and I bet he'll look at you even more than he does at the cattle. You flatter me, pa. Picked out 50 heads, sir, and they are beautiful animals. That's fine. Maybe I'll go take a look at them. Morris, do you mind looking after my daughter for a little while? It's more interesting than looking at cattle, sir. So that'll be my very great pleasure. Now don't you worry at all. What did I tell you, Emmanuel? I'm ready. My father's only interested in cattle. And you take advantage of that, huh? <laughs> but, my dear lady, what I intend is to take advantage of you. Shall we take a walk? All right. I didn't expect to find a nice girl like you in a cattle market. <laughs> the nice girl doesn't seem to be in a nice mood. I'm tired of playing second fiddle. Hmm. My father is past his prime. I want to take over and do things my way. That's exactly what I want. Maybe we could be good business partners. Yes, they are beautiful animals. I'll take them all. Have your men drive them over. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Ah, there you are. Hello again. Lawrence had some very interesting theories to discuss. That's right, sir. Now, when you uh, to be quite frank, sir, we didn't just talk about cotton picking. We've been considering the possibility of making a future together. I would look favorably upon your asking my daughter's hand in marriage, and I hope your father would, too. be satisfied. Surely the most important thing is for us to be satisfied. Emmanuel's uh, way of expressing herself, sir, is very forthright, and I very much admire the way she uh, makes up her mind and gets straight to the point. My daughter has always filled me with surprises, and I hope you'll find her as delightful as I do. Yes, she's a delightfully surprising young lady. Here you are, boss. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's nothing to worry right. about. Just let him rest that up for a few days, and mind you don't work anymore. Take him away. Come along. Come along, Whitey. Your troubles are over, Pa. What's happened? Oh, nothing special. But still... Have you convinced the bank not to foreclose on the mortgage? Uh, no, no, Pa, I didn't. But maybe I found a rich wife. Is that a hope or a prayer? You mean an answer to a prayer. Old Johnson's daughter. With his capital. We'll make ourselves another fortune. How'd you do it? I'm proud of you, boy. Pa, I really didn't do anything. It was a Manuel who wanted it. I'll go to work on that father of hers. Simple witted fellow. Now, I'll admit, I'm getting old and sentimental. You're a genuine southern gentleman, sir. 
I want to give my daughter a dowry she'll be proud of. Well, uh, if you insist, Johnson. Manuel will have the richest dowry <laughs> He's in all the He's my dowry should bring tears to my eyes, but he makes me we'll laugh. Make the match. The best is good he doesn't match. seem to realize that his plantation will be mine now. And my daughter's. What makes you so sure we'll have a girl? I'm going to. I'm quite Please sure. So. That's what I want, and I'm sure to get it. Tell me. You mean that I'll have to do just what you want? <laughs> There's no problem, darling, because now you're my man and I'll always know what you're looking for. Emmanuel, darling, you know what I'm looking for just now? Oh, yes, and I love you for it. But actions speak louder than words. I'll bet yours do. Come on. Maybe I should say what next. You just leave everything to me. Here we are. I'm happy to be with you. I hope you're not just going to talk about our future plans. I plan to give you what you're looking for. Where's the trouble, Missy Johnson? Come here, Joto. This uppity slave here tried to, to do things to me. He's got to be punished. I'll see to that. Stake him out and whip the sass out of him. Sure. Come on, black boy. I didn't do nothing wrong. Hey, mister, please. You've got to learn to respect me, and you'll learn the hard way. Dragging your feet. <laughs> Missy 
said you gotta learn the hard way. I don't deserve this, Missy. Why are you doing this to me? Why? Doing fine. Sprinkle that salt over the cut. <laughs> Alive? Thank you, Massa. I appreciate that. I am punishing this boy, Lawrence, and nobody's asking you to play the Good Samaritan. I'm not playing anything, Emmanuel, but I'm a practical man. And I'm no slave lover, but, but I think they're more used working the plantation than just lying about here. This black tried to get a hold of your Emmanuel. How'd you like it if he tried to put his paws on you? I'd send him back to work. Take his mind off fooling around. You're avoiding the question, Lawrence. But if I get myself raped, remember now. Don't say I didn't tell you. Huh. If you don't provoke him, he won't make trouble for you, Emmanuel. I don't even want to think about it. Let's go. Put that slave back to work in the bottom land. Yes, Missy. Come on. Fun's over, boy. Missy's pardon. Got no appreciation. That's your trouble. Okay, numbskull, you can bleed all over the cotton. Stole the master's brand new Sunday go to meeting hat. Paul, why is that slave in the cage? Because he stole my best hat. Yeah, but now he's occupying our best cage instead of giving us a valid explanation. Why did a boy need your hat? Damn fool got himself a belly full of religion. He wore the hat to go sing in the preacher's choir back on Thanksgiving. 
Yes, but... He got what he deserved. He didn't put on the hat himself. He gave it to his brother as a birthday gift. He can go. The preacher settled with my father. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You soon got back in shape again. You got a real fine body. Would you rather drive that axe into me? I'm just trimming my timber. The flowers in my garden need trimming. And I figure for now, you can work on that. Sure, Missy. <gasps> Mr. Lawrence, I nearly spilled the coffee. I'd like to make it boil right over the pot. Get out of here. When you're in my house, Lawrence, I won't have you playing around with my property. I'm telling you once and for all. I wasn't playing around. I was just appraising the quality of the goods. Emmanuel, let this be a lesson to you, darling. Have you a mind to preach at me or to put your hands on the family help? Next time, don't keep me waiting. I've been here for an hour. Not here, please. Let's go in my room. Come on in. good so you don't catch cold. Yes, sir. Checkmate. <laughs> That's why I never play with you, Mr. Johnson. Let me console you with a coffee or a highball. A highball, sir. A highball, Judith. <clears throat> Did you say something, daughter? No, no, nothing, Pa. I'm plain exhausted today with moving around looking into things. <clears throat> a man would have to be in two places at once to take care of everything. Your health, son. And yours, sir. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be going. It's a pretty long ride home. Bye. You remember that slave girl we bought yesterday? Ain't nobody touched it, Mr. Lawrence. I put it aside for you. Damn right, too. Anyone play with that winch before me, I'll have him castrated. Now you go bring her here and rub down my horse. Right away, sir. She is now, sir. Nice and clean. Uh-huh. That'll be all. Strip naked. Oh, Milton, no, please. <laughs> My woman's pa interrupted us. You can finish things off. Please don't.
hell's fire. Damn it, old boy, what do you mean by screwing a slave girl right here in my house? Go right back to bed. You're just envious of me, Pa. When you were young and able, you started most all the mulattoes in Louisiana. I didn't put my slave girls into my bed, God done it. A stable is the best place for that, boy. You ought to have more sense by now. I prefer room service and no damn straw tickling my ass. Morning, son. Morning. Fine day for trading. Uh -huh. And I have some fine stock here. Open your mouth, boy. Uh, can't say much of those teeth. Well, look at this one. What do you think? It appears to be in fair shape. Strong as an ox. Could pull a load of hay all by himself. And now we come to a real bargain offer. See the muscles on this man? Looks like must have swum all the way from Africa. All I'm asking is a fair price. A hundred dollars a head for the lot. <laughs> okay. Guaranteed? Guaranteed against everything. Except for damage due to a careless handling. I handle them carefully. you bastard. Trouble, Mr. Lawrence, sir. He got a hold of a gun and tried to shoot me. Shall I beat him to death for you, sir? No, just hand him over to Miss Emanuel. Let her take care of it. expecting her to come back soon? Do you know where I can find her? She's gone for a ride, sir, and I think the master's taking a nap upstairs. All right, I'll wait. Give me a drink, will you? Oh, oh, stop it, sir, please. Come here, you pretty little witch. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson. I guess I disturbed you. I've been tending to some business in town. Well, sir, I'm convinced my daughter wouldn't approve of your actions. You fooling around with that Judith. 
I am aware that very few ladies like that kind of domestic help. It's always been an established prerogative of female tradition. And my daughter's a mighty proud girl. It's quite reassuring to see that I can talk to you as man to man. I figure you could use more discretion for the sake of Emmanuel. All right. I'd better just ride out to meet her. See you later, sir. Hmm. Mr. Johnson, help me, sir. What's the matter, boy? Snake bite. Oh, my God. We got to do something. Come along now. Easy. Easy. Judith, give me a hand. Sit down here. Bring another chair. Get me a shoelace out of the drawer there. We have to stop the poison from circulating in the bloodstream. I'll go get the doctor. You stay there and don't move. What the hell? You can trust me. There's no time to lose. <clears throat> Doc, come with me. You'll die if you wait for a doctor. I'll take care of you. Now I'll show you how my people cure snake bite. These leaves have been soaking in a special infusion. Well, what's it supposed to do for me? The herbs are a natural antidote to the poison. How come you're taking all this trouble after the way I've been treating you? Be easy for you to let me die. The dear Lord's commandment is love thy neighbor as thyself. What are you talking about? Me and you were not neighbors, girl. I'm the master and you're a slave. We are different colors, but we are all God's children. Cain killed his brother. There's evil in our souls. Heaven holds a place for those who do not hate. You surely must have learned your schooling from the preacher. And I thank the Lord for giving me a chance to save one of my fellow creatures. You mean you forgive us for what my people have done to yours? I just feel that there's still hope for me and for you and for all of us. Give me some alcohol and plenty of boiling water. Wait a minute, Doctor. The bandage shouldn't be removed until the herbs have dissolved in the bloodstream. What the devil do you want, sir? Do you need me or some black witch doctor? Leave this man alone. Go and find some work to do. Uh, such impertinence. Giving me orders. Acting as if she's the master and I'm the slave. Damned immoral. I hate to interrupt you in these brilliant observations. But do you mind if we discuss the snake bite? Uh, I'm not here to discuss anything. I'm doing my duty, curing the sick, according to the laws of medical science. Quite rightly so, doctor. So tell me, how does medical science explain me being alive? You bit me over one hour ago. Hmm. I have to admit, it was a miracle. For me, maybe it was a miracle. 
an angel's blessing. And I believe that, like it or not, in this case, it was the black angel. Come here, Judith. Little black angel, will you keep your paws off my fiancé, or will I knock it into you? It was God's will. My second name is Manuel, too. And you know well that it means God's with us. Isn't that lovely? Well, you better start hoping he's with you now. <clears throat> I'll wash your sins away. <clears throat> I've had all I can stand. I even have the same name as my slave, damn it. You listen to me, Judith Emanuel. Just you keep clear, Mr. Lawrence. I'm warning you. I'll get my gun and send you right to heaven. Express delivery, that clear? Uh Come on. Hurry it up there. Move it, you lazy bastards. I said move it. Let's go. Good evening, Mr. Lawrence, sir. Uh, this is one of the new batch, sir. And let her get some sleep. Well, you always... That's enough. Don't bother me. Yes, sir. Congratulations on your engagement, and may all your troubles be little ones. Evening, son. The captain and his mate just got into New Orleans on their slave ship, and it seems they had a very interesting voyage. Sorry, Paul. I'm afraid I'll skip the fascinating details for now. I'm tired and going straight to bed. Good night, all. A sailor's life is kind of... The boy the just isn't himself tonight. Lawrence, what is it? Look, Ma, a snake bit me over on the Johnson plantation this morning. Oh, my God. I guess the doctor must have been right there, or else you wouldn't be alive to talk about it. You know, I nearly died there, and I am deeply indebted to the friend who saved my life. He has my eternal gratitude. You're my only son. There wasn't any white doctor to save me. No, no, it was a black angel. Good night. Good night, son. He'll be all right, Thomas, once he gets a good night's sleep and recovers from the shock. You know, a snake bite would confuse anyone. The main thing is, he's alive and well, and he always was a headstrong boy. Oh, well. Over there, Ted. Now, ain't that a pretty picture? Real pretty. Move over. Come on, you oh, get up. What? what are you waiting for? Uh, what you doing, Master? Shut up. You... Now this one. Yeah, okay, Dad. What's wrong? Hold it. Nothing's wrong, boy. This is your big night. Hey, get on your feet. You come with us, boy. We got this here present for you. No! Oh, no! No, Jeff. Don't do it. She's my woman. We're not animals. 
And you're my friend. <clears throat> Move along, you. You mean you forgive us for what my people have done to yours? I just feel that there is still hope for me and for you and for all of us. Get down there. Welcome to the bridal suite. Get on with it. Let's see if you learn the facts of life. Don't make me do it, Captain. Don't make me. She's Sam's woman. And he's my friend. Oh, I won't make you do it. But if you don't, I'll castrate you. his buddy so he can see the show. Come on, let's see some action. Your buddy sure has plenty of brotherly love, boy. Something on your mind, Lawrence? Lawrence! Hmm? Uh, sorry, darling. Uh, you were saying? You look worried. Who, me? How does your leg feel now, Mr. Lawrence? My leg feels just like I do, like I'm born in you. I'm glad to hear that, sir. Don't forget to repeat the treatment. Make sure you get rid of that poison for good. I will. I bet tomorrow when you come over, she'll be all dressed like a little nursery maid. If one day someone saves your life, you'll feel different. I'd rather not take the chance. I don't trust her kind. Usually, the patient prefers to stay alone with his nurse. Those herbs sure do stink. You. I'm not wasting time. I'll have you whipped to death and it'll be slow and painful. For God's sake, Emmanuel, I owe my life to this girl. And I won't put up with this. <clears throat> Please try to understand. It makes no difference if her skin is black. She's a fine person. And I admire her. This damn girl has bewitched you. But I'm going to show the bitch she's a slave. She's all yours. Hold it. 
You leave her alone. Damn you, Lawrence. Don't forget this is my house. Don't interfere in this. You own this house, not her body, because I intend to buy her. She's not for sale. I don't care to do business with you. Tell your father to come over to my plantation and tell us his price. Mr. Lawrence. See what they do to your guardian angel. <gasps> no! Oh. Oh. oh, God, no! Oh! Oh! No! Oh! No! For this, you white trash. I'll dance on your grave, you bastard. It'll be my pleasure to see you rot in hell, my little nymphomaniac. Sleep in my bed for the night. Tomorrow I'll speak to my mother. I'm sure she'll be glad to have you here as a maid. You don't have to feel you owe me something because I saved your life, sir. You must know it's not gratitude the way I feel about you. Most embarrassing for me, Lawrence. 
You'll make your excuses to our neighbors. Now, just a minute, Paul. Maybe the truth is even more embarrassing. Our good neighbor's daughter had a crew of hired hands beat me half to death. Hmm. You humiliated my girl in front of one of her slaves. And I will not tolerate such behavior, young man. All I intended to do was buy the slave. So all we have to do is pay the man, Paul. I ain't making excuses for bleeding on his grace. Tell me the price of the slave and we'll say no more. I'm asking for an apology for the honor of my daughter, sir. I might have some remarks to make about the honor of my family getting trampled on by your day laborers. Miland, I don't want to be feuding with you. Just consider that slave as a personal gift. Thank you. Good day. Uh, by the way, Paul, yesterday you said you'd feel eternal gratitude for the person who'd saved my life. I'd like to ask you one favor, and that is to allow the girl to live in this house right now and then eventually to set her free. I've got no choice if that was the girl old man Johnson was just here yapping about. And I'm asking you to repay her for her kindness. Her name is Judith. I must say, I hope she's going to be able to give me a little help in the kitchen. <laughs> you see, we took your chains off as a present for Lennon as your woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about you, Massa, if you get to hell before I do. You sure talks big for a boy who needs a friend to satisfy his woman. <clears throat> Listen, boy, if any man had taken my woman and screwed her, I'd stick a knife at his belly, you hear? But you ain't man enough to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Sharpie, do you see how his woman was loving every minute of that? <laughs> you got him thinking. <laughs> Let's see what happens. You son of a bitch. You done me wrong. You ain't no friend of mine. I wish you were dead. Listen, buddy. You gave in too easy. They'd have cut my balls off. And got someone else to do. Don't blame me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's enough fooling around. And you all start fighting for real. Yeah! <laughs> Hey, you want to bet some money on this? Which one you back? Well, I don't know. They all look the same to me. <laughs> now, ain't that a damn shame? Fun's over already. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 
a tight fist. Oh. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> On your feet, boy. Now we buy these slaves to pick cotton on this plantation here and not to use like gamecocks. <laughs> Look at that. Your blood's the same color as his. Hey, big boy. Who, me, missy? Who else? My name is Elias. Why don't you come on upstairs? <laughs> Walk right in. Did you ever have a white woman? No. I bet you didn't. Well, that's good, because I've never had a black boy either. But the rumor is your good stuff. Your master, he'd make me die. I'm a slave. And I'm your mistress. I've had my thrill, black boy. Get out of here! Out of here! Out of here! Out of here! Out! Out! How are you getting on with my mother? She's been so kind. Being with you is enough to make me feel content. It's like living in a dream. You know I'm in love with you, but my dream isn't real. Your class is prejudiced against a slave. That doesn't make any difference, and our dream will come true. Nobody can stop us. Elias, forgive me for the way I treated you yesterday. It's Mr. Lawrence's fault, you hear? He's not going to let us be happy after this. It's him or you, so you got to kill him, Elias. I tried to kill him once, but my hand shook. I just ain't able. My God, why don't you try to understand? He's ruining our chances of being happy together. He's prejudiced against you and me. Can't you get that into your head? I tried to shoot him after all. 
I'll promise you what you like. Kill him. Sorry, Manuel. But I ain't cut out to be a murderer. I'm not cut out to be a murderer, but I'd sooner see you dead than married to her. You're prejudiced all the way, Pa. Now, don't get so excited. The doctor says it's bad for your heart. Damn it. Get out of here. I'm not going to listen to you yap about marrying that girl. I'm not about to permit any more. And God strike me dead if I do. Oh, oh my God. Thomas. Paul. Oh. He's had a heart attack, Help son. me get him to bed. Then I'll go for the doctor. Joe. Yes, ma'am? Rub him down. He's had a hard ride. Sure thing, ma'am. Boy, put that bucket down and come with me. Uh, uh, with, with you, Missy? Yes, with me. Come on. No, Missy, please. I mustn't do that. It's time you learn to obey. I mustn't. You'll do what I want. No. Oh, ma'am. There's a boy in there who's tried to fool around with me. Get him and put him in the cage. You want I should whip him some too? Of course, Joe. I don't know the rules of being accepted in heaven, but I guess I'll find out pretty soon. So I suppose there's no cause to worry about it. It's difficult. A man does the best he can, and then maybe he begins to wonder if things could have been different. I think the times are going to be changing, Paul. I hope I'm going to find this freedom for us all. Everybody should do what he believes in. A man should fight to keep his dignity in living. On this plantation, there'll be no more slavery. You will see the coming of a brand new day. Different, I hope, and better than the past. Bless you. Whatever that slave has done, I think, you are being too hard on him. I hope your resentment for Judith isn't making you take it out on the other slave. Slaves cost a lot. I've already forgotten about that silly little housemaid. I'm only interested in the discipline here. I must say I'm sorry I didn't take a firmer stand about the way Lawrence behaved. I'm certainly not obsessed with the idea of revenge. Lawrence means absolutely nothing. His father and I are business partners, and I know you appreciate that. Don't worry, Pa. I'm too much of a lady to go compromising myself. And by the way, Pa, before you go, would you tell Elias to bring me some buckets of hot water for a bath? Sure, Manuel. When I was a little girl, I used to try to get hold of my reflection in the water so that the river wouldn't carry it away. You're one of the few beautiful things that this old river has seen while he keeps on rolling and rolling along. Yes. In the middle of too much suffering. My parents came from Africa. And they died in misery after I was born. We'll never do anything that can wipe out the past. But we can try for a better future. Remember, I believe there is hope for us. For all of us. I think without you, I, I never would have seen, never seen the light. I owe all to you. Everything I am now. It's all thanks to you. Mm. 
Come along, Judy. We've got to start somewhere to put an end to all this hatred and oppression. I know what you mean, Emmanuel Johnson. If only we could convince her to open up her heart and mind. We'll go to see her. Put the buckets down. Come here. Put him down. You know that I've been waiting, and you know what for. Two buckets of water, ain't it? I was waiting for a man. Waiting for a long time. Let's get moving. My bed's been waiting, too. preferred to be tied out there in the stocks. I saw you last night when you called that boy Joni and, and what happened to him later. He couldn't do what you do to me to set me on fire. He deserved it. I've given up hope you treat me like a human. Though my heart burns when I look at you. But I'm not even a slave to you. Not even a beast. I'm just a simple, meaningless object. Damn you, Elias. I always get everything I want. Nobody refuses my orders. There's nothing that I can say. The only thing I need is to make you love me. I'm spoiled and superficial. You're a real person. I'm a selfish, empty little bitch. You're right, you are a meaningless object. You said you'd rather be tied in the stocks than act the stallion. Very silly of you, Elias. So I've arranged something more thrilling. You're gonna die to save my good name. Then he jumped out the window. You go down that path. You two with me. Begging your pardon. What is it? 
Missy May Wells. She's out for blood. For what? She got four men with guns. They're going to kill Elias. But why? What did the man do? She says he tried to rape her, so he's got to die. I want him alive. I'm gonna fix him. Back down, you bastard. You belong in the dirt. I belong to the human race. Don't ever forget it. killed Miss Emmanuel. You're not alone. Oh. We're here. And we love oh. you. Nobody could possibly love me. You have to learn how to give love first. Yeah. I'm learning that now. It's never too late to free our hearts from hatred and fear and make a better world. I love you all. Now it's up to us, Judith, to love and make it better. 